In this video, I want to talk to you guys about retail arbitrage, pros and cons, and how is it compared to private label FBA, and also some pros and cons about that. So those of you that are new, welcome. My name is Bashar Katu. I'm the founder of BJK University, an education company with a mission to impact 1 million lives. So one thing before I get in there, I'm going to share my screen and then kind of, you know, uh, draw um, out for you guys some pros and cons. Before I get into that, I just want to kind of explain what retail arbitrage is. And why do I even know about it? So what, re what arbitrage is, it's simply where you, you, know, you, you own something or you acquire something in one market, and then you kind of release it or you sell it in a different market. And then usually the difference is a profit for you. Hopefully that you make a profit in, in the process. So when I first started, um, you know, when I first learned about Amazon, um, arbitrage for me was just a no-brainer for me to get started. And I started with it because it was easier because I can get started immediately and I can start generating sales immediately, right? And so what, what I would do is I would simply go to stores and I would, um, you know, when you uh, uh, download the Seller Central app, the Sellers app, there at the top right, there's a little camera, little figure button thing. When you click on it, it's like a barcode thing that you can scan. Every single product, um, almost every single product has this like serial number or this barcode right here. So when you scan that, upon scanning it, it would tell you if this product actually sells on Amazon or not, right? And then it would also tell you how many sellers are selling this product, how much it sells for, all that stuff, FBA fees, everything else. So that's what I would do is I would go to stores, I would go from store to store, and then I would start just simply go through the shelves and then start scanning. Usually I would start at like the clearance section, I would start at like discount section and then just kind of, you know, and then over time, I created like a criteria in my mind where, all right, this probably looks like a good product. This probably doesn't look like good product. And then I would also select categories. So it was like toys category, office supplies, um, you know, baby products, things like that, kitchen stuff. And my criteria was making sure that there was at least a $10, you know, difference between what I can buy it for and between what it can sell on Amazon for. Um, and then also that on that listing on Amazon, there aren't more than uh, 10 sellers selling that product, right? So that way there isn't that much competition for me. And it's usually less than about two pounds uh, in weight and about, you know, like fits in like a, a, a shoe box or whatever, right? So those were kind of the things that I was looking for. But then I quickly realized that, you know, um, I found, well, I remember actually it was December of 2015, I think it was. It was right around uh, Christmas. I found this toy. I could buy it for like $16, $17 and sell it for like $35 to $42. And I was making about $10, $12 in profits after FBA fees and shipping and all that stuff. But then what I realized is that I don't have unlimited uh, supply of that product. That was the first thing. The second thing is that, you know, I had to always travel because one store had like 10 units and then the other store had like 30 units and then that's it. And then in order for me to scale the business, I needed to always be looking for more products and it just wasn't scalable. And that's why I went into FBA private label. So let's kind of share my screen here and then I'll walk you guys through, um, you know, some pros and cons. So the pros that you can get started can get started immediately, right? Um, you don't need to have a whole bunch of uh, inventory. You don't need to buy a whole bunch of inventory. You can just literally walk down the street to some place and then just simply get started, okay? So, that's the pro. Also, you don't need, uh, don't need um, lots of startup capital, right? Again, I started with like a few hundred dollars. I think, I don't know how much it was, like two, three hundred dollars. And then I could just simply get started, right? Now, the cons is not easily scalable, right? And then the second thing is that in order, well, limited, limited supplies, for products in order to scale um, must always be looking for more new products, right? So that was, that was kind of the downfall of this. What I liked about it is that I can get started immediately. Um, and then, you know, I don't need a whole lot of capital because again, I was broke, I was in debt and I was just whatever money I was making from Uber and like driving, uh, you know, kind of dishwashing. I could just use that money and then buy some products and then sell it and then profits and then just kind of reinvest, right? But then once I like, I figured out, okay, I can sell on Amazon. And I, because at first it was more of like a mental block. It's like, does this thing even work? 
is this Amazon thing a scam? How does the system work? You know, how do I like kind of getting my feet wet? You know, this is like good to get your feet wet, right? But it's bad for, uh, let's scale, right? So let's say if you want to get your feet wet, you know, you're starting out, you're a student, you don't have a whole bunch of money to get started, your skills skeptical, you don't know if this thing even works, you don't know if this online business thing is a real thing. This is a great way for you to kind of like get started, get your feet wet. But if you're past that, maybe you've already started doing this. Maybe, you know, um, you already have a business. Maybe you already have a job. And it's like, you know, I don't have. Oh, and then this also needs a lot of time, right? Because you're constantly traveling. You're constantly, like, literally physically traveling. Um, not location. Well, actually, location dependent. Right. So, so it's, so it's not where, you know, like you can't do it online. Well, the business is operating online, but you have to physically go to the store. You have to physically scan products. You have to physically buy them. You have to physically package them. Um, uh, labor, lots of labor work, right? So you have to, uh, you know, storage needs storage. Yeah. So you have to buy the product. You have to, you know, package them. You have to ship them to Amazon. You have to do all that stuff. Right. So for me, again, it was a good place to start. I started here and it was great. And it was like, all right, cool. This sounds great. You know, I loved it in the beginning. It sounded cool. It was a great place to start. And then I realized, all right, so I've got a business that I think at the time I was doing maybe like $5,000 a month or something like that. Nothing significant. I was maybe profiting like a thousand or something. And I was like, all right, well, how do we now scale this thing? You know, I was able to like, I had some cash. I had some, I started creating some reserve. I started realizing, you know, okay, I can raise some money. I can borrow money. I could do this. I could do that. And that's when I realized, all right, well, how can we scale this thing? I don't want to travel. I, I was sick and tired of like driving. I was sick because when I, when I had my restaurant business, I was always driving around shopping for this buying this. I was sick and tired of talking to people and, and dealing with people, had to stand in line all the time at the store. I was like, all right, how can I do this from the comfort of my home? I just want to like, if I travel, if I get sick, if, and that was the other downfall is what if I got sick? You know, what if I just don't feel like working? What if I just don't feel like driving? What if all these things, you know, what can I do where I could just run it from my computer? And that's where I discovered private label. So private label, um, it's simply where you find a product. So let's say this thing right here. So this is ear, ear pods, earbuds, whatever they're called, right? So let's say, just don't think that these are Apple. These are just like, I mean, if you look at them, they don't even have the name Apple on them, do they? Yeah, they don't even, oh, they do have uh, the name Apple. So let's just remove this from the back. And these are just generic like ear, earbuds, ear pods, whatever they're called, right? So, um, what I would do is I would find the supplier, the manufacturer, the manufacturer these things. And then I would simply say, hey, I want 300 units. They would slap my logo on it. So Apple, in this case, would slap their logo on it. And then I create my own listing. I, I don't have any competition because also with retail arbitrage, you're tagging along to other people's listing, right? And now I own my own listing. I can advertise my own listing. I can create my own photos because sometimes... The listings that you, you know, that other people created, like they suck and you can't edit them, right? I create my own listing, create my own photos. I can design it however I want. I could, you know, and this is a, my own brand. No one else can steal it from me. This is something that also is scalable. This is something that's sellable. This is an asset. I can go to the bank and borrow money against it. I can, you know, go to people and say, hey, I own this thing. The retail arbitrage, you're selling on listings of other people. They can take down the listing. They can kick you off. They can do all that stuff. And that's when I realized, okay, private label is the way to go. So let's now go back to my screen and then let's do some um, pros and cons. So pros is that, well, actually, let's start with cons. So the one con right away is that you need, um, need uh, startup capital, right? Minimum uh, 3K. Right, so minimum 3K to buy for products only, right? 
So obviously you need a little bit more for product, you know, other stuff, but minimum 3K for products only, right? So that's kind of the downfall. But then again, I had kind of saved up some money here and I realized that I can, I can uh, raise money and that's when this made sense, right? Now, the cool thing is that it is scalable. Only need to, so let's say to generate 10 to even 20K a month, only need one product, right? Where here you'll need like five or 10 or 20 products, um, unlimited supplies. Now, obviously not for free, but you know, um, more, uh, le uh, less time consuming, more um, systems and infrastructure in place. I don't know how to spell this thing. Okay. Um, because again, you're using, you know, no, no storage stage, storage necessary, right? Um, so, you know, that's the other thing is that with this, you need to sometimes store in your house or somewhere else. You know, you, there are no systems. You're packaging everything. This is more automated, right? Well, let's just say automated. So that was the cool thing is that it was, it's automated, right? Because uh, I'm dealing, um, you know, uh, location independent, where this one, this one is location dependent because again, you have to travel, you have to go physically to the stores. This is location independent. So if you get sick, if you decide to travel, if you, whatever, you could actually do this from anywhere in the world. You just need a computer and internet, that's it, right? The only downfall is that you do need startup capital and it takes um, takes a little longer to get started, right? Because again, you have to find the supplier. You have well, obviously, you have to do product research. You have to find the supplier. You have to negotiate deals. The product needs to be manufactured and needs to be shipped to Amazon's warehouses. All that stuff. But you can generate ten to twenty k a month with just one product. It's a lot more scalable and easier to scale. Scalable, easier to scale, right? Um, you can, you could have unlimited supplies. Literally you can always go back to supplier and say, Hey, I need another 500, need another thousand, need another hundred, whatever. Right. Um, less time consuming because you're not traveling anywhere. You're not doing any of that. Um, more systems in place, more infrastructure. You just deal with suppliers, supplier ships to Amazon, Amazon stores, fulfills orders, all that for you. You don't need to store anything. It is pretty automated and also location independent. And so for me, when I found, you know, this strategy, I was like, this is a no brainer. This is the way that I want it to be. This is how I want to scale my business. And this is literally the only strategy that I've focused on over the last seven years. And that's the only strategy that we teach today uh, in our community, in our university to our students. And that's where we teach them how to find a product, how to locate a supplier, ship to Amazon, launch the product, get their product listed on the first page among the top 10 sellers in, in, in a week or less, and simply show them exactly how it's done. So if you want us to show you how this is done as well and you're interested, click the link below, below this video to learn how BJK University can help you. And outside of that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.